61A, lecture number 33, announcements. This lecture, just like all the rest of the lectures in this course, is optional. We won't have homework assignments based on this content or labs or discussion, but you could always look back at previous versions of the course if you wanted to find example problems. But I think it's fine to just listen and learn. But first, some announcements. The scheme project is due next Tuesday. Checkpoint 2 is due today, and that's most of the project. You might as well just finish the whole thing today. If you finish the whole thing before Monday, you get an early submission bonus point. Homework 8 is due today. Homework 9 is posted. It's due next Friday, but you could finish it early if you want. The completely optional Scheme Recursive Art Contest. Entries are due the Monday of RRR week, and we're just about to post some details about the rules and how you submit. And don't forget that the final exam does not occur during finals week, but instead during the last week of regular lectures. So instead of having lectures on the 27th, 29th, and May 1st, we'll have exams to 10 p.m. to 3 p.m. each of those days. We've covered all the content in those exams already. And the other thing you should worry about is that we will have a practice exam during the regular lecture time on Friday the 24th, that's next Friday, starting at 2 10 p.m. We won't have any lecture content that day, instead just the practice exam, and if you do it, you get three extra credit points. Not only will you get these extra credit points, but you'll get some practice, so there won't be any surprises when you take the final exams. Okay, that's it for announcements. On to today's lecture material, which is about how SQL actually gets used in practice. Normally, when you build a program that interacts with a database, you write some SQL queries by hand, and you know how to do that now, but it's also common to have other programs generate SQL queries. For example, you could have a Python program generating queries in order to interact with a database. And I'll show you an example of how to do that in today's lecture so that you know how these things get used in practice and you can use them yourself if you want. Here we go.